Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper Moment number 197. The purpose of our Digging Deeper Moments is to take God's Word to God's world, and we are so glad that you joined us. If you would, please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Tonight, we conclude our series, Is the Bible Historically Reliable? Now, we could have spent a lot of time on this, but I'm just covering the mountaintops. What we've seen, in a nutshell, is that yes, it is. The Bible is historically reliable. And we've looked at six reasons thus far, given in Digging Deeper Moments number 191 through num number 196. In this lesson, we want to answer another question that is related to the historical reliability of the Bible, but it really is a topic all of its own, and so we're going to condense it down to one Digging Deeper Moment, and it's this. Can we trust the biblical text? Do today's Bibles accurately represent what was originally written? And this is a valid question because the Bible itself says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, test all things and hold fast what is good. And in Acts 17.11, it praises the people in Berea for diligently investigating the reliability of what the Apostle Paul was preaching when it says these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So, can we trust the biblical text? that's been handed down to us? The answer is yes. Now, there have been books written on and college courses developed on this subject alone, so there's tons of information. But what we want to do is not overcomplicate the point. The simple fact is, when it comes to the evidence for the accuracy of the New Testament text, it blows away all other ancient literature or ancient works of antiquity combined. And no one seriously questions the historicity of these works. It's not even close, my friend. The New Testament far exceeds all other ancient manuscripts in both number of existing ancient manuscripts and the gap of time between when they were first written and our earliest copies. Listen to the words of F.F. F. Bruce, an expert on the text of the Bible. Perhaps we can appreciate how wealthy the New Testament is in its number of manuscripts if we compare the textual material for other ancient historical works with it. For instance, for, Ga for Caesar's Gallic War, composed of 58 to 50 BC, there are only several extant or existing manuscripts, but only 9 to 10 of them are good. And the oldest is some 900 years later than Caesar's day. Of the 142 books of the Roman historian Livy, found, written from 59 BC to, 18, to 17 AD, only 35 survive, and these are known to us not from more than 20 manuscripts of any consequence. Then there's the 14 books of the histories of Tacitus, about 100 A.D. Only four and a half survive, and then of the 16 of his annals, 10 survive in full and two in part. So that these are not a lot of texts. The text of these extant portions of these two great historical works depends entirely on two manuscripts, one of the 9th century and then one of the 11th. So we see that there are not only a few manuscripts, the time gaps between the historical documents is also great. Now compare these with the New Testament. There are more than 5,300 known Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, compared to 50, compared to 20, compared to 2. Can you see the, the great gap in the numbers? There's 10,000 in Latin, and at least 9,300 other early versions. We have more than 24,000 manuscript copies or portions of the New Testament in existence. Sir Frederick Kenyon, who was a director and principal librarian of the British Museum, and second to none for issuing statements about manuscripts, says this. He says, besides number, the manuscripts of the New Testament differ from those of classical authors, and this time the difference is clear gain. In no other case is the in interval of time between composition of the book and the date of the earliest existing manuscript so short as that of the New Testament. The books of the New Testament were written, were written in the latter part of the first century. The earliest existing manuscripts, trifling scraps exist, accepted, he says, are of the fourth century, say from 250 to 300 years. This may sound like a considerable amount of time, but it is nothing to what parts most of the great classical authors, which we illustrated just a minute ago. In other words, the gap between when the New Testament documents were written and our first copies is pretty small in the grand scheme of things when you look at it from a historical standpoint. In his book, A Ready Defense, Josh McDowell gives a table showing a detailed comparison of these writings that is quite eye-opening. It contains names like Livy and Plato, Suetonius and Herodotus, just to name a few. Jonathan's going to put that list on the screen just so that you can see it. What all these manuscripts do is give textual critics, and that's those who study ancient texts, it gives them ample evidence for the accuracy of our New Testament. When examined, the New Testament gets an A+. The New Testament is clearly superior to any and all ancient texts, even combined. What about the Old Testament, however? 
It's much older. Is it as reliable as the New Testament? That's a great question. Again, the answer is yes. And I say this for several reasons, but I'm only going to cover one, and that's the Dead Sea Scrolls. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls was one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of the 20th century, perhaps even the greatest. And Josh McDowell writes speaking of these scrolls and the Old Testament. He says, the problem before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls was, how accurate are the copies that we have today compared to the text of the first century? Since the text has been copied over many times, can we trust it? The answer again is yes. That's because the Dead Sea Scrolls contain some 40,000 inscribed fragments. Yes, you heard me right. Some 40,000 inscribed fragments. From these, experts have been able to reconstruct more than 500 books. And these scrolls date to before the time of Christ. And this is amazing because before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest Old Testament text that we had dated to 900 AD. That's 900 years after the time of Christ. And so that gives us at least a 1,500-year gap between the Old Testament books and the latest Old Testament book, its original copy. But these scrolls are a 1,000 years younger, a 1,000 years closer to the originals. And what was found is that the Old Testament text that we have, called the Masoretic text, is almost exactly the same, meaning that there has little to no corruption in the text over that 1,000 years. And it illustrates that these books were copied very well. An example of this is the book of Isaiah. McDowell writes, The impact of this discovery is in the exactness of the Isaiah scroll, 125 B.C., with the Masoretic text of Isaiah, 916 A.D., 1,000 years later. McDowell isn't the only one who notes that the Masoretic text is amazingly the same as the Dead Sea Scroll. Paul, Paul Johnson mentions in, in his book, A History of the Jews, when he says, The Dead Sea Scrolls testify, on the whole, to the accuracy with which the Bible was copied through the ages, though many mistakes and variations occurred. Yes, there are variations, but these are minor. They're like the use of synonyms, like, you know, using one word for another but means the same thing, or failing to dot an I or cross a T, but nothing substantial. There is no major divergence from the Dead Sea Scrolls to the Masoretic Text. And this is only the testimony of the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's also the Septuagint, that's the Greek translation of the Old Testament. The Samaritan text, which is a Samaritan copy of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Then there's the Jewish Targums, that's ancient Jewish paraphrase of the Old Testament. Then there's the Mishnah, that's the oral tradition of the Jews. The Gemaras, which are com commentaries on the Mishnah. The Midrash, which is rabbinic, rabbinic commentary on the Old Testament. All these testify with one voice that the Old Testament has been well preserved. For more on that, see evidence that demands a verdict pages 58 through 60 by Josh McDowell. The point is, it's suffice to say that we have essentially the same Old Testament that Jesus used when he said these words in Luke 24, 44. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. The law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms were the three divisions of the Bible used by Jesus. That is our Old Testament. So can you trust the text of the Bible? Absolutely. Both the New Testament and Old Testament are historically reliable, and there's plenty of evidence to show us that. If this lesson's helped you, please share it with a friend, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check out our Sunday morning live podcast on either Apple or Spotify. And hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please don't forget to do that. It helps us greatly. Thanks. I hope to see you next week.